Okay, so hi. Um, so I talk about what's coming on for next week, the uh, Armistice uh, weekend, uh, with uh, the 11th Armistice Day and uh, 12th Remembrance Sunday. I mentioned previous videos uh, with these martyrs which are going on uh, regarding the uh, Palestinian and Israeli uh, conflict. Uh, and it's, it's amazing. I don't know who's organising them. And there's not much discussed about who is organising this because these martyrs have been very effective. There have been large numbers. Uh, a lot, you know, how is this being organised behind the scenes? Uh, generally the public don't really know about what's going on and who's doing that okay so it'd be nice to know who the people are actually organizing these marches who are their names what organizations do they come from because you usually if you follow them you know you follow the money this is where it comes from this is being backed by uh somebody it just doesn't happen from a vacuum that's the first thing um the next thing is that Genuine fears in regards to the, the cenotaph and uh, having seen some protesters uh, defining uh, statues. What tends to happen is that people are def they de you know they defile, desecrate certain statues, not knowing who these monuments are to. And it's a pretty you know well known like Winston Churchill. And then when there's an outcry about a particular mo uh, monument, say like the cenotaph, these people who may live in this country uh, have no idea. Uh, of what the cenotaph is all about. And so, so a lot of them, it's the first time of them hearing about what the cenotaph is. And once they've heard it, they then put their frame of reference in regards to whatever it is their so-called ideology is or a political or religious belief is and uh, use it as a, as a target in which to attack. Okay, so unfortunately, uh, the cenotaph, which is like the heart and soul of the... British uh, feelings in regards to those who have fallen uh, in past wars and, and, and conflicts. Okay, that has been the uh, a target uh, deliberately uh, sought out by agitators uh, on something completely separate. Now, in regards to Israel Palestine, I'm absolutely neutral on the on the conflict. Why? Because it goes back. Yeah, it reminds me of some quote I heard from Huckleberry Finn as to why two neighbours are, are fighting with each other. And uh, I think Huckleberry says it was about some uh, neighbour dispute which happened many, many years ago, which uh, both neighbours have forgotten what the dispute was all about. And to me, this this thing was going on in the Middle East is just going to go on and on and on. It's not settled. It will never be settled. It was been going on when I was a child. It would be going on when my children have children. Yeah, it's, it's not going to get resolved. However, what is concerning is that when it spills over into this country, and you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't have protests. It's just just delay on that particular day. So, okay, we cancel the protest on this day because of remember Sunday. Start again the week after. It's not a problem. Okay. Now, uh, people are debating whether or not that should be the case. But I would question: Would they debate it if something like the EDL? decided that they wanted to do a march over Remembrance Sunday. <laughs> Would they get the permission to do so? Where do they get permission to do so? Because apparently nobody's given these people permission. Nobody's putting the hand up and being held accountable for um, giving these people uh, permission to do the marches in the first place. The, the, the numbers are quite overwhelming for the police, and so they're, they're, they're doing a very hands-off sort of policy. They're frightened. Ultimately, they're frightened because the police presence there is about one and a quarter, one and a quarter um, percent of the overall march. It's very small. If it things were to kick off, they'd be overwhelmed and overrun. Okay, so there's that element, but here's a, a more important element. You see, because you won't get more patriotic people to this country than those who attend. Do you remember on Sunday? A lot of these people have given their limbs and you know time of their lives for the country in the service of their country. And it means a lot to them. Okay. And uh, when they see that the Remembrance Sunday, the whole service, which has been going on for over a hundred years, I think it's about centenary, I think. 
when they see that that has been downgraded for something which is not to do with this country, but because of a vocal minority of people that demands that it gets put on, you know, to the front, okay, things will turn. Now, I don't think it's going to be bloody because the type of people who uh, run the country or who, who serve the country, oddly enough, although they're in the military, they're, they're not into that, that space. Unless, of course, you get organised groups of people within the army who decide that enough is enough. And then they will apply themselves with military precision into working out what the actual issue and problems are. I don't even consider that danger. I just consider it as a possibility. And uh, so, you yeah, know, I think the authorities need to be mindful that you can't just be intransigent or indifferent or nonchalant about proper concerns and dangers, which this can happen, yeah? Because it is dividing the country and the nation. And the last people you really want to, want to upset are the military. You know, Napoleon said that an army is a crowd that obeys orders. And if you have people who can work out and, you know, function as a team, a particular objective in mind, yeah, provide that objective is good, then great. If it's bad, it can be very bad. We've seen terrorism in the past, um, the 77 attacks, managed to bomb them, as we can hear there in the background, Guy Fawkes, etc. But if it's carried out by professional people, the effects can be very, very devastating. Now, I'm just saying, I think the authorities should give this absolute priority. I don't think they should be pushing foot in around on it, okay? The military will be present because it's a military-type parade, if you like. But um, I just think that, you know, the country, this, this could be, a, basically, this could be a tipping point. Yeah, this can be a tipping point and it can be avoided. And I think that the authorities got to take it very, very serious. No, no ifs, buts, or maybes, and passing the bucks on you need to stand firm. Because if not, things kick off, it will kick off. And it will, you know, we, we've got, we have, you know, we're going to have a Palestine too. And it's, it's, it's what, what's been tried to be avoided won't be avoided. Okay. That's it, really. That's what I want to say. Just, uh, Wait out.